while the pig, the crow, the squid, and like creatures are forbidden, are forbidden by the Hebrew dietary laws, saturated fats, sucrose, and chemical additives are the unclean or forbidden foods in the etiology of internal health of rational man, I wrote. Page 138 of the Skeptical Nutritionist. I'm a genius. I really am. Boy, I was smart when I was young. That's really a good paragraph. Look at that one. Where the pig, the crow, the squid, and like creatures are forbidden by the Hebrew dietary laws, saturated fats, sucrose, and chemical additives are the unclean or forbidden in the etiology of internal health of rational man. That's really good stuff. And then I wrote, I support tradition, but urge my religious friends to eliminate dangerous components of their foods developed and introduced long after biblical laws were written. But it's like talking to yourself. You go to a Jewish group, they're, they're sticking their, they're, 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 they're eating Stella d'Oro, a cake in their face every two minutes, a, a sweet, they wonder why they have diabetes, and they look so bad at 50 so many. I'm serious. They've lost all concept of diet. You can't live that way. It's impossible. Some can. It is true. Some people can eat anything. I call them nutritional rogues, by the way. These are the people who you say, oh, my grandfather lived to 104. You're full of crap, Savage, because he ate everything you just said he shouldn't eat, and he drank a bottle of scotch. I said, so he's a nutritional rogue. You try it. Get back to me when you're 50. See how long you last. Right? What else did I want to tell you about? I want to read your paragraph, introduction, why I am a skeptic. Oh, this is an interesting one. I quoted Galileo, who wrote, there is no scientific work that only one man can write. Now, that was written by Galileo in the Middle Ages. Listen to this, Al Gore, you schmuck. Al Gore schmuck and every other putz in the academic establishment who said that all the science is in on global warming. Schmucks, idiots. You don't even know what science means, you schmucks. Here's what Galileo wrote. Putz. There is no scientific work that only one man can write, schmuck. Galileo wrote that, but oh, Al Gore said oh, all the science is in on global warming. And then the idiots in the media said all the science is in on global warming. They're heretics. We know the earth is flat. And anyone who says the earth is round is not a scientist, said Al Gore. And then the schmucks on MSNBC snickered and went, yeah. <laughs> Introduction, why I am a skeptic. Food is such a personal thing, and how anybody can dare suggest diets for others continually shocks me. And repugnant cuisine is scarcely the road to health and long life, I wrote in 1983. One more paragraph. Let's see. Here, oh, this is good. Now, there are fine books on becoming vegetarian. Some of my closest friends are vegetarians. That's a joke. Yet we must not seek to declare as an objective truth that the plant world holds our major key to longevity. It may be true that George Bernard Shaw, Tolstoy Wagner, Shelley Byron Thoreau, and other illustrious figures were vegetable eaters, but so was Hitler. In fact, the German dictator's manic depressive mood swings and associated unexpected aggressive outbreaks might easily have been somewhat controlled with a good dose of high-quality protein and unrefined carbohydrates and with a steady intake of a good vitamin mineral supplement on a regular basis. Better, Hitler should have gnawed on a big leg of lamb once a day and had a glass of wine. The well-known photo of Hitler and Eva Braun at Berchtesgaden with the maniac passed out in an armchair after eating lunch is not an image the hypoglycemically attuned researcher is likely to forget, I wrote. Diet and behavior vary in too many people for us to look for a simple set of rules as our salvation from too intense swings of mood. So, I mean, I wrote some nice stuff. You know, Hitler was a vegetarian and didn't drink either. And he was always starving. He could never get enough of anything because he was always hungry, so he invaded one country after another and killed too many people. As I said, if he ate a leg of lamb and had a drink once in a while, the whole course of history would have been altered. It's, it's absolutely true. The book was way ahead of its time. 1981, Macmillan Publishing, out of print. I still own the copyright, so don't rip it off. I think I'll reprint it now. The Strategy for Designing a Nutritional Program. Pro it's a good book. Not for sale. Not for sale. And I want to tell you that the word food fascism, the phrase, I, I think I coined it on page six. Food fascism. I was against it then. The bookstores aligned with correct diets for the unmet masses. Social engineers, you see, I was against them. And then I wrote, food fascism, like other varieties of the social disease, requires lieutenants to proselytize. Not wishing to participate in any form of totalitarianism, I wrote, I intend not to dictate a correct diet for a fictional reader. Now, if only Michelle Obama knew that. She dictates to you what you should eat, and then she eats ice cream in, in Martha's Vineyard. 
and you're not supposed to notice that. She came back eight pounds heavier. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The king has no clothes. We're living through it. Every day we see the victory garden that's outside the White House and they grow your vegetables and eat good and you're not eating right. They're going to arrest you if your child's obese, take them away from you. And every time they're on vacation, there they are in Dearborn, Michigan, and they're eating ice cream cones. What the heck? Not good for you to eat like that. Not healthy at all. You know, practice what you preach, my friend.